Hello, good evening. It is Monday Night Live. It's Q&A, and we do have special guests tonight. And I, I know some of you will be over the moon because it's Dr. Grady. Some of you will be so disappointed because we haven't got Philip Day on. Well, we did write to Philip Day and ask him to come on the programme, and uh, he hasn't replied. And I don't think he will, to be honest. It's one of those feelings. But uh, we do want to talk about the things that are pertinent to today as well as uh, what we know from Dr. Grady, he's uh, very much into creation science and he is uh, a, a real mind uh, over the things which we sometimes uh, get so perplexed. And uh, of course we have Dr. Nikki as well yes. sitting with us, Dr. Nikki Mills, I'm only joking. I don't know what the doctor <laughs> stands for. Yes, <laughs> well, in case we want one. But okay. uh, Nikki is going to very kindly do the emails for us tonight. So try and not be rude, uh, just be civil, live at revelationtv.com and of also the SMSs will be there on your screen as well. Dr. Grady, let me just uh, give you a warm welcome, very warm, because it's quite hot in the studio tonight. Well, better thee than me. <laughs> OK. I know you only made it by the skin of your teeth I, anyway. I, I <laughs> that's true. I appreciate the Christmas decorations in the studio. That's nice. Yeah, uh, that Dr. Nice. Ellie did those. <laughs> Doctors in the there's a lot of doctors in the house uh, <laughs> these days because they're self, so, yeah. <laughs> self doctored now now i know you have all the credentials but i did warn you in a little uh, text earlier that uh, you know no doubt that we do need to deal with some of the things which people are talking about all over the place for example that there is no such thing as covid 19 it is all a hoax um we've got so many people uh, out there that are t telling me and sending me videos that are saying look you know here are some very uh sort of plausible people some of them might have doctorates and other other titles and things like that and or they've worked in, in the hospitals etc etc and said that there is no uh covid as it's no worse than uh, just the normal bout of flu or the the people that die from flu every year, the numbers are not uh, as great or uh, even as great as they are for the COVID-19. So what is the truth uh, in the matter? It'd be good to hear from you, just to pray see your position. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Howard. And, and if we, you and I can't answer the question, the three wise men over at your left shoulder will. Absolutely. <laughs> that, in fact, I was asking the Lord, before, literally before you came on the air, uh, who on earth is going to speak out in these days? Uh, who is God's prophet? Is it the ones that we're hearing that there is no such thing as COVID and it's all a hoax and it's all part and parcel of trying to get control of us because we're heading for the new world order, etc. And I understand some of that and I'm in agreement with heading for the new world order. But is COVID-19, is the use of uh, all the governments across the world uh, doing something to our minds by well, you know, telling us that this is a pandemic of uh, extraordinary, um, you know, sort of uncontrollable in the sense, because we've also got some strains as well were announced tonight, different strains that have come out, uh, coming from Spain as well, and also into southern England. So what is it all about to help us to understand this? Okay, let's talk about it. I like it. The COVID-19 virus, it's called a novel virus because it's a new virus discovered but has been around for at least a year or more possibly two we have some blood samples from a couple of years ago that would indicate that it was in the environment even back then it is basically nothing more than a, another form of a flu virus now let's talk about the severity it is not as deadly as the regular flu it is not as contagious as the regular flu. The problem is that it is more age specific than the regular flu. That is that when you take a look at age categories, almost no one under the age of 40 is dying from it. Under the age of 20 is almost unheard of. What we have, though, is something that is very hard on the eldest group. When we're talking about 70s, 80s, and 90s, it's particularly bad on those with various comorbidities. Uh, uh, typically, people who are being coded with 19, dying from 19, are not dying from 19. I mean, I, I wish they'd stop saying this. What they've got is a political and a monetary 
reason for proclaiming that people died from COVID when in fact they died from two or three other things and happened to have the COVID antibodies by the time they died. So what's happening is you're, you're not looking at it from an age specific standpoint. And this is something new. So whenever you have something new, people are startled, they're fearful of something new. But it's being used as a hammer. As a matter of fact, I'll say sledgehammer by the left to try to enforce socialism and communist population. It, to, to my mind, it is absolutely anathema what any reasonable person would do. Okay. When we think back to bird flu, H uh, H1N1, we take a look at other Asian flus that have come along. We, we simply learned to live with them. We got immunizations for them. But they're still here today, and they're still killing more people than COVID. So, what, what, what so is, what is the, why is it on the news today that you really, um, are, you've got uh, the medical people, the scientists, you've got, uh, you know, members of the, uh, the government actually, you know, really hammering us and saying we're now going to close us down uh, to tier three, which is the, the highest uh, tier where pretty much everything is closed down, the shops, the, the, the pubs, the, all the, the hotels and things like that. So what is it that uh, they're, they're up to then? What do you think they're up to? This is basically nothing more than control. Uh, this is to see that government is God replaces God and is and in the liberal media and in the government elitists, they are using this to solidify control of people and really bringing 1984 into existence. Right. Now, every, every now and again, we lose your words. Now, we, we found out in the past that what it is, you're too close to the mic if you just pull back a little bit because then it won't cut out, just like it's gating you. You understand what I mean by that expression? I do. Yeah, so just repeat that last paragraph <laughs> or sentence. I, I said that basically what we have is 1984, George Orwell. Right. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought you might have said, yeah. Okay. And, uh, yes. So, okay. And so th this is liberal elitists trying to have control over everyone's life in the most minute sense. They are closing businesses in order to get communism. They are closing the churches because they're anti-Christian. Same thing with any other religion, but they're, they're closing down religion to try to convince people there's no God of any kind and that government is the only thing that is important in your life. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, that should set the cat amongst the pigeons, as it were. And let's have a, a listen to what you have to say. I've got some emails yes, coming in already. That's great. Email. So we've got one from Marcus that says, hello, what are Grady's thoughts on the COVID vaccines and will he be taking it? <laughs> well, of course, there's more than one vaccine, of course. Uh, I've talked about this two weeks ago. Two of them are very, very similar. A third is slightly different. But they are all basically RNA, which is a new uh, medical way of making vaccines. I consider it to be safe at this time. We have done studies to make sure that people are not dropping dead from it, obviously. But the longer taking it, uh, in the sense of five years and 10 years, cannot speed up these biological things in a laboratory to give you a five or 10 year result. Mm -hmm. there, there are things that you can do in the lab to speed things up. This is not one of them. But they have taken all the safety protocols into consideration, live testing over 100,000 people. Uh, you had a couple of people with a bad reaction to it, with allergenic, and they probably shouldn't have taken the first place. They should have done better. You're still uh, breaking up a little bit, so I'm just going to ask you just to back off a little bit again from your mic because then it will help. I know that it's the internet connection and everything else, but it just is gating. Right, uh, next one. 
Please, yes, we've got Matthew. a couple of comments that have come in as well. So uh, Jerry says, good evening. A virus so bad, one has to be tested to see if one has it. Madness. So that was Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Um, we also had Chris that said, hi, guys. If we stopped testing healthy people and stopped wearing masks, this pandemic would be over. God bless, Chris. So thank you, Chris, for your thoughts. Um, and then this I question is... That. Sorry, Say Grady? that again. I say I tend to agree with Chris on that. Right. Um, this one also says, is Grady aware that the present virus is following the trajectory of the Spanish flu? And if God willing, it fizzles out in February 21, the vaccines will be uh, uh, affect a placebo. What do you think of that, Grady? Well, again, the Spanish flu was a two year process, basically. Uh, so far, we've only had one official year. But yes, the, these things run their course. And again, we've had many other flus of one sort or another. And they came and they went. Now this one, again, it's particularly bad with the oldest and those that are, are the most infirm. But that's the only distinction. Okay, next one. Okay, this one is from Alex. It says, hi Grady. Do viruses have a use in our world, or are they something mutant from the fall of Adam and Eve? Oh, viruses, as I've said before, can be very, very useful. As a matter of fact, if it were not for viruses, we really couldn't live. How come? Uh, they're very beneficial viruses, even in your body. But for instance, uh, viruses by the literally quadrillions, quadrillions uh, in the ocean, uh, keep certain organisms in the ocean from overpopulating, which would use up the oxygen, which would cause the oceans to go stagnant, stop producing oxygen, and we'd all die. So, so there is a useful thing to viruses, and we are using viruses usefully in medications as a way of injecting materials into cells in a very benign and beneficial way. Oh, let me, let and in me. fact, we're going to use them in part to help solve genetic disease. Okay, let me ask you a question then. In that case, uh, would God actually use uh, the virus or the death of the virus to actually fulfill a particular prophecy in the Bible? I was looking at it just earlier on in the book of Zephaniah. It says, I will completely remove all things. This is from chapter 1, verse 2. From the face of the earth, declares the Lord, I will remove man and beast. I will remove the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea. So if he's going to remove all of these things, the fish of the sea and things like that, and we, we know there are other scriptures talking about um, the end of days, uh, the, 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 the death of the sea, as it were, and all the life in the sea, which is the fish and things like that, and, uh, and those creatures, sea creatures. Um, would, he, would it be because the, the virus or... Uh, so these viruses would actually uh, give up their um, uh, effectiveness. Well, of course, you're also talking about a cross-reference to the book of Revelation, where the oceans would dry up. Mm -hmm. And so that's not going to be caused by a virus. It's going to be caused by some other event. Okay. But uh, again, I want to stress that the majority of viruses are beneficial, but there are those that cause sickness, illness, and death, too. The Bible also talks about pandemics, uh, you know, and plagues and things like that coming uh, in the end of days as well. So, um, so in a way, people could be saying, well, th this is something which God has um, sort of sent to upon us. Oh, uh, of course, it could be sent in a judgmental way. After all, when people fall out of love with God, he removes his hand of blessing and protection and therefore it allows us to suffer. Mm -hmm. Okay, emails okay. pop up. Next all. one, this is from Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Um, you say, uh, Howard, with every argument, there are always people for and against. The UK government has refused to listen to all arguments and only hear the scientists who want to control the nation, so push through for the vaccine that has been tested for less than six months. Some people have had palsy after taking the vaccine. Okay, I know there's sure. been some... Um, bad reactions by a few people but uh, certainly I uh, don't think the, I've heard about the palsy but you might be right. Um, any any news of such a thing happening in the States or have you actually you've only just started your uh, in vaccinations today haven't you not? 
Uh, technically, yes. Uh, in very small numbers, it really won't get going next week. But there are people making claims for all sorts of reactions. The fact of the matter is, the only thing that's been documented that I'm aware of is simply the allergenic reaction that you're aware of. Okay. Uh, we're still losing your odd words, uh, Grady. You'll have to get a better uh, internet provider. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, mate. Go on. Um, there's another one here that mentions uh, Paul Z. This is from, oh, there's no name on this one, but it says, uh, Q&A, greetings all. Well said, Dr. Grady. Did you know in Australia they have stopped the trials on vaccine because people were testing positive for HIV and a form of facial palsy? So that's another one that's heard about that. Wow. <clears throat> Haven't heard that one well, as well. And again, this will have nothing to do with HIV. Yeah, I can't see the connection either on that. But anyway, no. yeah. Okay. Um, this one is from Linda. It says, hi, guys. Is it possible this virus has been deliberately manufactured by China and is therefore biological warfare, or is it a naturally occurring virus? God bless Linda. Good question. Warfare? It, it's a good question. We've talked about it before. Um, my, my basic position is that it is a virus they were experimenting with because of the very poor controls in a communist country it got out. And once it got out, they saw the advantage of spreading it around the world because China is trying to become the dominant country in the world uh, in every way whatsoever. In the end, they'll only be trading with themselves then, surely. <laughs> <laughs> if they're successful. <laughs> only if you learn how to speak Chinese, Howard. Yeah. Oh, I take it away. Uh, this one is from Kim. She says, the pandemic is just to get us all to take <clears> the vaccines. There is a substance in the vaccine that will alter our DNA. Um, she also says she heard two people died in the vaccines trial. Okay, is it in the DNA? This is but something that's been going around as well re recently. Yeah. Is it going to alter These the vaccines, DNA? Yeah, the, the, the vaccines, from all the information we have available, are RNA. DNA based. And they can very little actual information. They are simply a way of getting into cells that cause the cells to have a reaction that allows the immune system to start acting immediately on something that's never seen before. That's actually beneficial. How come? Because when you have the natural immune system, it takes a long time for the human system, to, which is designed by God, to do trial and error testing until it finds it. That, that, that takes time, and it's individual. But if we can develop a vaccine, then we can do the entire population very quickly. And this particular vaccine costs themselves to send out a message to the immune system it draws its attention to something it's never seen before, causes it to immediately start to make antibodies for the particular little proteins that attach the virus to the cell wall. And in doing so, stops the virus from propagating. Okay, interesting. What is, what is the term RNA? Uh, what's the difference between RNA and DNA? Well, RNA is simply a, a template that's opposite to the DNA. So what's happening is in your cells every day, the DNA has the information necessary for all the functions in the body, all the proteins to be manufactured, the enzymes, and so on. The RNA is a mirror uh, that fits to the DNA, pulls away, and then can be used to make DNA. Um, it, it's, it's basically a template. It's the opposite template. Okay, uh, interesting. Didn't know that, yeah. but yeah. You learn all sorts of things on this program, yeah, Nikki. Definitely, definitely. Uh, this one's from Nick. He says, hello, is there any truth in the rumor that the, is it Pfizer, how's it pronounced? Yeah, Pfizer, Pfizer vaccine can make young women of childbearing age sterile? Again, these kind of conspiracy theories, false information, people just make up, put it on the internet, 
and people will repeat it as if it was, excuse me, expression Crestful. gospel. Yeah. <laughs> you and I have the same mindset there. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, this is nothing but people who are either mischievous, intentionally being evil, or they're easily persuaded to follow a false light hmm. But in the day and age that we live in, you know, given all the social media outlets and everything, I mean, it's so easy to, to actually have all of these particular conspiracy theories, as we call them, mixed in with truth. Um, and so it is very hard for the average person in the street to be able to discern what is true. So um, how, what would you advise us to do when we're, uh, you know, uh, embroiled in all of this sort of social media and, uh, you know, in the day that we're living with even television and uh, radio programs, we're, we're all talking about it? Well, everybody's talking about it, but the problem is that the liberal media is using this for political purposes. And I'm sure you're well aware that Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter have simply censured any of the conservative content and they're <laughs> only spreading the liberal content. And yeah. it's the same thing's happening in the UK. Yeah. <clears throat> and therefore, we have to realize that, that uh, well, there's an interesting concept. If you're familiar with the word fact, as it was originally, the word fact didn't mean truth. The word fact meant that you accepted or rejected what you were told depending upon the person who told it to you. So that if someone who was always truthful told you, you'd tend to believe it. But if somebody was constantly lying, joking, you would then say, no, it's not a fact. But unfortunately, in common terminology, people tend to think that word fact means truth. It doesn't. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting because uh, only today uh, I've got a, a good example of Facebook um, actually uh, rejecting something that I'd put up, which was just quite simply uh, something which the sci science, uh, latest science discovery uh, through trial, obviously, uh, is that the fetus, the unborn child, actually feels pain now at 11 weeks uh, of ingestation. So um, I just put that up on my Facebook. And uh, I noticed within just a matter of minutes that it was actually rejected. Um, and uh, also something else that I put up today, and again, straight away, they said uh, we're investigating it. And, uh, and it was simply just talking about freedom of speech. <laughs> uh, we've lost the right for the freedom of speech, and they've actually blocked that as well, or rejected it because I wanted to boost that. You know, it, it's uh, quite amazing that they are, if you like, at the top of the ladder, and they're actually just uh, dictating what uh, can and cannot go out. Very, very sad. Yeah, I, I put up a statement. It was just a truthful statement about COVID. And YouTube took it down and told me if I did it again, I'd be off for a week. Yeah, there you go, you see. So the, they rule the world, are they not? You see, that's just it. They have a monopoly on information flow. Mm -hmm. And they are simply allowing only the liberal to be heard, conservative to be absolutely censured. Yeah. So the, the rights of the unborn were just totally wiped out, on just, just rejected out of hand. Uh, so that balance of, you know, another point of view, uh, uh, other than what the liberals and think and the lefties or whatever you want to call them, um, was just totally taken off the map, you know, just uh, very, very sad. But it's the day we live in, and uh, we know that uh, according to Christ's, uh, you know, forecasts or prophecies that we to expect such a, a world that we're living in right now. Okay, next email. I just want to add, I think it's so important for um, us to be highlighting this and for the viewers to know what is going on in the media and what's happening with social media as well, because then we can be praying for discernment. We have all this information bombarded mm. at us. And like we were saying, it's hard to know what is truth and what isn't. Um, so just anything that you hear on the news or you read on Facebook, maybe just be praying for, for God's wisdom and discernment to know, know what is right and yeah. what's, what's not. Yes, but uh, yeah, as you can tell, you know, if, you're, if you want to actually take over the world in the sense and uh, have uh, only one side point of view, mm. which is usually anti-God anyway, 
Um, and uh, what better way to do it than through social media today? Yeah. So this is why these giants are where they are. But uh, even the governments would like to uh, butt in and do something. But then, lo and behold, it would be them who take it over. So um, it is a battle for truth and, uh, and righteousness. And uh, this is where we are in the stream of human history. And it's quite interesting. It's quite a privilege to be alive at this time, I think, Dr. Grady. We thank God for people like yourself. Well, and it's a great time to be evangelism because people are so fearful. It's a good time to share Christ with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. but but they keep saying we're going to follow the science, but it's not true. I've been writing a lot about this recently myself. You know, when they say we're going to lock down schools, businesses, uh, transportation, so that we're going to have less COVID and more safety. It's exactly the opposite. What they're doing is they're locking people at home, which is causing despair, suicide, unhealthy conditions, mm -hmm. more death than the COVID itself. They're locking children down out of schools in order to then dumb them down for a socialist communist type of takeover, which is exactly what Lenin did in Russia. They're locking down transportation so that people cannot exchange ideas or even enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And what they're really doing is they're locking us up, not locking us down. Where do you think this will lead to? Could, could I suggest um, that it could lead to where they would actually uh, remove not only our way of living, but also our any goods and chattels, homes or whatever, uh, investments, they could take all of those away from us? Well, and, and just to take a look, Howard, what's happening in California? The insane governor of California, that's my opinion, he's insane. He's a communist and wants to stop hate speech inside your home when you're having a private meal. Yeah, now let me repeat that because, again, you, we lost your, your verbal. Uh, it wants to um, control or stop hate speech in your home. Is that what you said? In, in your own home. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting no. that message over here as well that they can be yeah. come illegal if you're talking about someone or s other people uh, in a derogatory way that's considered to be hate speech and you be uh, prosecuted for it in your own home. Isn't that but incredible? Who, but who determines what hate speech is? Well, this is what I was putting out today yeah. on Facebook, you know, <laughs> you know, because uh, the things that Christians would say um, are an offense to other people. We know the scripture themselves say that the gospel or uh, the good news of Jesus Christ is an offense to many. But it's also uh, the, the, a life changer and a life saver. Uh, and we, we have an obligation to preach the word of God in and out of season, whether it's acceptable or not. But uh, it's not a nice place to be and don't kill the messenger, but they want to. Well, and, and again, they want to control thought. Mm -hmm. Now, if they can control thought, then they can control property. So you can see the day coming when they'd actually just literally take away all our assets and everything else we've been working for and just, I suppose, give that to the many. That's, that's communism. Well, see, again, Lenin said that the objective of socialism was communism. Now, you've been experiencing some serious socialism since World War I in the UK. And it just gets more so and more so. Yeah. I have a remark about every trip I take over there, I see more and more Big Brother. Say more and more what? Because we're losing you every now and again, mate. Big Brother. Okay. George Orwell. Yep. Next email. There's a, a good email from Cynthia. She's um, put in the subject title, Truth. That's what we've been talking about. What a joy to hear the truth. I recommend a book by Melvin Tinker called Hideous Strength, A Deeper Look at How the West Was Lost. It explains very intelligently and academically how Marxism has gained control of government, media and education. It's well worth reading so we know what we're up against. And then perhaps the church will wake up and do the job it's meant to do. Things might well change, and that includes me. Thank you for a great and informative program. Blessings, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. 
Uh, this is a nice little comment to Grady. I love Grady's straightforward explanations. Great to see you on again, Grady. I love to hear your point of view, and that is from Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this one's from Anita. She says, good evening, Howard, Nikki, and Grady. Isn't it true that there have been a lot of allergic reactions to the vaccine? There was another email that came in as well about the allergic reactions. Um, she said, I have heard that some people have died. I'm unsure if that is true, but they have said that people who are vaccinated can be a asymptomatic and pass on the virus. So isn't it better just to wait for people to become all immune? God bless you all from Anita. Good questions and good answer, I think, in itself. What do you think, Grady? Well, first of all, every vaccine takes a time to affect, just like the, the flu, flu immunization every fall. It isn't really effective for at least two weeks. The same thing is going to be true of COVID-19. Now, you may have a little reaction, a, a warm spot, a little bending of the skin, uh, possibly even a little fever, but this is the same thing that happens for some people who take the flu immunization every year. It's nothing to worry about whatsoever. Now, I only know a couple of people that have had allergic reactions. Uh, I know of no people who died from it. Uh, during the time of testing, there was uh, a death or two, but this was not attributed to, to the vaccine attributed to other things that uh, they had in, in their system that were like congenital defects. Okay, while we're on the, the subject of vaccines like that as well, in connection with uh, whether we would take it or not, um, we were asked uh, a couple of times whether or not, what is Revelation TV stand on it? And we don't have a stand uh, as a corporation or as an organization, but as individuals. It's up to the individual, would you not say, uh, Grady, to actually decide whether or not they want to take the vaccine. I personally don't have a problem with it. If it's safe to do so, I'm not concerned that it's in any way connected with taking the mark of the beast, uh, even though down the line they might try that one uh, in the future. But uh, for now, uh, this is just like if we eradicated smallpox and other diseases like that because of vaccination. So why not, uh, you know, uh, play your part and uh, be vaccine for the sake of the many? Well, again, if you're healthy like you and I are, we can wait and let those that are <coughs> far more likely to have a mm -hmm. problem get it first. Yep. But that's true of any vaccine, basically. Uh, I have no problem taking it, but I don't have a need to take it right now. Yep. I need to get that at the first responders, medical out to the retirement homes that sort of thing first and that will really be very helpful mm -hmm. uh, but I want to simply put it down to this is good stewardship you know good God has allowed we're us losing, to we're losing your voice time. again Grady we're losing you I, I said it's simply good stewardship that's what I thought you was yeah okay we yes. just got a bit anyway so uh, thank you Nikki Yes, well, Maria's got um, a view on the vaccine. She says, Dear Dr. Grady and Revelation family, the mRNA vaccines are fully synthetic, so that means not natural. They are man-made. They manipulate an activity inside the human cells, and we can never tam tamper with God's creation. We do not know what could happen in the long run with this nanotechnology. It's not about fear, it's about wisdom. It is a risk. I believe we should never take. We must respect God's creation. Please, let's not make the mistake to encourage people to take this vaccine. God bless you all, and thank you, my dear Revelation family. And that's from Maria. And, and I appreciate the opinion, I do. And again, Howard and I would tell you that I don't think anybody should be mandated to take it. I think it's a matter of personal conscience. However, when you talk about the human body and God created it perfect to start with, human sin has caused the body to deteriorate. This includes our immune system. And what we're doing now with modern drugs is we are simply supplementing where the immune system has been deteriorated for 6,000 years. And therefore, it's a good thing in general uh, that we can come up with these kinds of medications. So again, I, I would say it's a matter of personal choice, but I would take it. Well, as you were saying uh, a few minutes ago, um, in, in reply to that uh, email, Nikki, was that our DNA and the RNA 
uh, work together to actually produce pretty much the same as what a vaccine would do, except the vaccines are working quicker and we should respond quicker by having the vaccine and it, it helps our immune system. Uh, so it's it isn't something that's taking over uh, or is contrary to uh, God's, if you like, makeup uh, for what we as humans um, are able to do with to provide for our um, and sustain our immune system and our, therefore our life. What do you think? Anyway, emails. Oh, um, this one's from Dave. He says, I don't know if this has been mentioned, but it's not so long ago that there were serious doubts from scientists that a vaccine could be found. All of a sudden, around 16 different pharmaceutical companies have developed a viable vaccine within weeks of each other. For me, it's just another reason to be dubious with the whole pandemic. That one's from Dave. Yeah. I appreciate the previous uh, email too, bringing up nanotechnology. I've been talking about nanotechnology for three decades, at least, if not four. And again, nanotechnology can be very beneficial or very detrimental. I stress again, technology and science are neutral. It is what you do with them that makes them good or bad. Or how you take advantage <coughs> of them to bring about a particular political agenda, yeah? Well, again, in this case, COVID-19 has become the all chamber of the left. It will accomplish anything they want it to accomplish. It can scare anybody doing anything that they want to do. It will make you compliant to government-run life instead of God-run life. Okay, another one about the mRNA. This is from Frankie in Belfast. Um, he says, um, Mardinia calls mRNA the software of life. Cells use mRNA to translate DNA into the proteins the body uses to function. Mod uh, Mod Moderna believes it can use mRNA to spur the body to produce its own therapeutic proteins, essentially putting a drug factory inside of the patient. Keep shining bright. And that's from Frankie. Thank you. Sort Good one. It's Moderna as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's Moderna, sorry. yeah. What do you, what's your response to Frankie? Well, I said that's a good, good email. Yeah. But the RNA is not going to change our DNA. It works alongside it? it well, mRNA simply means messenger RNA. Again, it's simply carrying the information in, in the opposite way. Um, let me try to give you another analogy. If you were to bite down on a piece of cheese, your teeth are the DNA. Mm -hmm. The mold in the cheese is the RNA. All right, okay. Yeah. And then if I poured a material into the cheese, I could reshape it, get the shape of your teeth, correct? Right, correct. And that's so, all it's doing is it's just carrying information in the, in the reverse. Right. Okay, it's like meniscus in your knees. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on. Okay. This one's from Tim. He says, hi, guys. I heard the vaccine has been generated using fetus, fetuses. Any insight into that? Thanks, Tim. And we did have another one asking a question on. Yeah. We did have that last time, but uh, Grady's very good at uh, just dispelling that particular myth. Uh, again, well, the, there is some truth 40 years ago, but go on. Well, again, there is no fetal material in these vaccines. Now, there are some cell lines that go back all the way into the 60s from aborted babies. And a couple of others, two others in the 70s. However, uh, when the viruses are used and, and actually infect a cell, the cell dies. All the cells that ever came from these aborted fetuses died 40, 50 years ago. I, I got to thinking about this, Howard, after our, our, like two weeks ago when this was a big, big up. If people are so worried about these stem cell lines, which is nothing but uh, grown in culture, used, of course, to develop vaccines for testing purposes, and you're worried about it coming from an aborted fetus that died 40, 50 years ago, we do not know those abortions. They were wrong when they were done, and they'd still be wrong today. 
no baby is being aborted today for the purposes of developing these vaccines. International law, uh, the individual the laws and so forth prevent this from happening. Mm -hmm. And stem cell alliance today are being developed from ethically harvested filter plants where no life is in jeopardy whatsoever. Yeah. But I got to thinking about it too. These people who are so upset about it, if you think about it, uh, you and I are the result of stem cell go back 6,000 years. The last part, again, we missed. You, you and I are the result of stem lines that go back 6,000 years. That's true. Every human being on Earth is life being received from a previous generation going back to Adam and Eve. And for you to be alive today, there had to be one continuous series of events for 250 generations, or you wouldn't be alive. The stem cells that come from the 40 and 50 year old generations uh, have separated by tens of thousands of generations. Thank you. Um, do you know, um it's very sad to say that we are losing a lot of what you're saying again, Grady. And I don't understand, uh, just this technical thing, but we need to be checking this. Uh, when we do the test in the afternoon, we don't seem to get these sort of uh, uh, problems that we're getting from you. So maybe it's because there's more use in America at this time of the day or whatever on your um, you know, lines out there. So anyway, do the best we can to conclude. Yes. We've got 13 mm -hmm. minutes. Okay, so this one is from Jim. He says, my vaccine is Psalm 91. I've had a vision of chains upon church doorways and we have become a doormat. We need to wake up and pray to lose these change, chains sorry, so we can do God's will and worship him as a body. Yes, and yeah. for everyone uh, who doesn't, isn't familiar with Psalm 91, it's talking about uh, such things as like pandemics, you know, and the plague uh, that would actually destroy us and uh, that we would... Uh, avoid that because of God's protection. So Psalm 91 is well worth reading uh, and especially brings a lot of comfort to those who might be fearful that God is in control and uh, can deliver you from any plague or anything that would actually harm you, especially if you follow him and love him, you know, and follow his ways. Right, next one. Where do you have Psalm 90 and Psalm 91 are also two of the great eight creation psalms. We didn't get all so, of that again. Such a shame. There, there, it's probably there Facebook. are eight songs that yeah. deal entirely with creation. And Psalm 90 and Psalm 91 are two of the eight great creation songs. Okay. Um, and next time we come on um, with you, maybe you'll give us uh, the other ones as well. Save us time tonight. Um, you have a question, Nikki. Yes. Good. It's got you thinking, hasn't it? It's got me thinking, it yeah. has. Grady, what would you say to Christians out there who say, I don't need to take the vaccine because God's protecting me, or I don't think I'll get COVID because I feel like God's protecting my health um, and I've prayed against it? Because we've had people on the channel that we've had on Skype who have been Christians who have gone through COVID and praise God have got through it. Um, so what would you say to those Christians who are saying, I've got my faith in God, I'm not going to get the virus, so I don't need the vaccine? If you genuinely believe that your faith is strong and that you're not going to get COVID, that's fine. But I want to be careful of presumptuous faith. You know, people can be presumptuous and God is not going to honor them. And give us an example. Well, you know, if somebody jumps off the Empire State Building faith believing that God is not going to smash on the pavement. But God does not rest the law of gravity simply because we do something foolish. But then you've also got examples in the Bible of people who've had such faith that uh, they see mir uh, miracles happen. And uh, this so, is, even today we have examples of that. So where do you get the balance? How do you, how do you have that confidence that what you're saying isn't being arrogant or uh, wishful thinking, but actually is a real faith uh, belief uh, that you will prosper or not be harmed by something? We always have 
what the Bible says. We always have the input of mature Christians. We always have situation and circumstance. In addition to that, if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, that's God. But if you're being pushed from high, Satan. And so there are ways that we can't know. My point being is you can't simply say, because I'm a Christian, something bad is not going to happen to me. That's not true. Bad things happen to people all the time. But one of the reasons why bad things happen to good people is because if we didn't have something to struggle against, we would be weak. And by struggling against adversity, it keeps us strong. Yeah, but that's when you look at the state of the world, and particularly, um, I always think of those suffering, those refugees in places like Syria. I mean, you know, do they need to, do their children need to go there through those destruction of their homes and their hospitals and see their parents killed or family members killed? I don't know. I couldn't, I can't, I understand what you're saying, but I just can't get my head around that because there's too many people suffering totally unnecessary and I know it's not of God but on the other hand um, I can't wait for the for God to just start again and give us his new heaven new earth okay and the sooner the better that's Maranatha yeah Maranatha yeah amen uh, Nikki okay so this one is from Jill she says we are living in Orwellian uh, an Orwellian atmosphere also my husband was in Germany in the Cold War years and met a man who was there during the Hitler years my husband said, why didn't they speak out about the rise of Nazism? The man said people were afraid their neighbour or their family members would inform on them. In the Spanish Inquisition, people were not even allowed to think, I feel we are heading in this direction. Blessings, Jill. I think she was referring to the, the Facebook blocking. Right. Yeah. What, what we want to say. Do you know this, uh, Grady, before you answer that, there's a series just out. Um, funnily enough, it is based in Spain, the series on Netflix. And it also is, I can't remember what it's called, somebody will tell me in a minute. But I started to watch it the other day. It's based uh, on a dystopian society which is going to occur in Spain. And it's uh, the main place where it all stems from is in Madrid. It's dubbed into English, so I am following it very well. But it is really disturbing because we, what we see coming is far worse than what the Nazis were doing uh, at their... Uh, height of their uh, regime and uh, it is something which you could see uh, the evil that is yet to be released on this earth is quite it's, it's, qu it's quite fearful if we didn't know uh, and have faith that God I is allowing it but only for a period of time yeah it's um, is it La Valla? that's it La Valla, yeah. well said yeah, yeah. And which means courage no idea. <laughs> something? Try and see that, uh, Grady. Just the beginning. It's it's. You don't have to suffer the c it for many in that series, but uh, it's well worth looking at because you think, how could that possibly be? And uh, interesting that uh, it's based in Spain, and it's a Spanish production, of course. Yeah. If you want to get depressed, have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is from Mark uh, in Belfast. He says, hi, Howard. You can't say in one hand the government are using the China virus to control us by locking up in our houses and on the other hand telling us they are trying to help us by taking the vaccine. Is that not a bit of a contradiction? Um, I don't see that. Do you, Grady? If, how would you answer well, that? Pass the no, I don't see it as a contradiction at all. But again, communist elitists are going to protect their own lives first. I guarantee you that along with the uh, people who are first responders, medical workers, uh, and the old folks type homes and so forth, the politicians are going to get it next. And as they say, watch them if they die. It's good, good riddance. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, next one. Next one. This is from Brian. It says, as the culprits that have lumped all this together as the Great Reset has appeared in a book that was already pre-written and published by the ex-European Minister for Health, which has turned out to be their excuse to use COVID to control every facet of life. Then should we be helping this minority of oligarchs to take over the world by taking their vaccine? Air travel and perhaps any method of travel will in future not be allowed without accompanying vaccine certificate, as has already been stated, and it is already being put into effect in the Philippines. 
Also, Australian Qantas Airways have also recently expressed mm -hmm. the same view. Shalom, yeah. Brian. And there were even in the news yesterday, they were talking about even restaurants uh, not allowing you into the restaurant, and that would go across the board in other venues for other things, gyms or theatres or whatever, unless you had um, proof of the vaccine. Where's it all going to end? The fact of the matter is that the problem is that people are so compliant. What happened to Christians as soldiers of God? What happened to the Christian church as the army of God on earth? What happened to us being able to influence society rather than allowing society to influence us? But I think this is what that last emailer is really basically saying. Uh, if we're supposed to be uh, leaders in the Christian world in that sense, why are we taking the vaccine? Does that not seem like a contradiction in terms? I don't see it as a contradiction because, again, we need to be healthy, do what we're supposed to be doing. So, My point okay, was, above that. all the rest of this, we're in spiritual warfare. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's take this one step further. Where, how far are we to go um, in, uh, in within the next few months of actually making our, our present felt? Um, are, are, are we to take up, no, arms? I would say not. Uh, what are we to do? Do you see what I'm getting at? How far do we go as Christians to combat what is happening? I, I don't agree with secession. I don't agree with armed rebellion. That's not what I'm talking about either. What I am talking about, standing up, not being steamrolled. I am telling you that good science says that masks are ineffective. Good science says that lockdowns are ineffective. Good science says that schools are not areas of super spreading of COVID-19. And the list goes on. But right. we've got to stand up and have our voices heard in the political realm. If Christians do not get involved with politics, then politics is going to overbook the strand. Okay, uh, we've only got two minutes left. Is there an email there that's um, begging yes, to be read? Yes, we've got some comments. Uh, Dr. Grady is providing such important information about the vaccine. We all want to know the truth about the safety of the coronavirus vaccine. Thank you, Howard, for bringing these concerns to the table for open discussion. And that's from Ruth. Uh, this one's from Les. He says, God has given us an immune system. Would you say keeping it as healthy as possible is a wise thing to do? Absolutely, yeah. I take vitamins, minerals, even, even supplementation of certain oils that are natural to the human body. Because I recognize that we used to live to be 900 years old. Today we live to be 90. Mm -hmm. We need to be supplementing what? the deterioration of human sin started in the Garden of Eden to try to stay as healthy as possible. That would also include immunizations and vaccinations too. So we need to be good stewards of our body because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to take care of our bodies that we can be soldiers of Christ and be effective. Yeah. And you can only do that if you're healthy. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it, it behooves us to actually look after or take notice of what we eat, what we drink in that sense, and uh, how and what our environment is, uh, whether we're in a healthy area as well, uh, oxygen, the right amount uh, of all the things that we need to keep life at the optimum. Okay, Grady, 